Hello, and welcome to Hagro's BBC Schools News Report. I'm Francesca. And I'm Ben. Today, we'll be looking at what happened when Bristol Vic Theatre Company came to our school to perform for our Year 7s and 8s. And later, we'll be looking at how the flooding disaster affected our school, staff, pupils and local community. Monday the 24th of February saw Bristol Old Vic Theatre Company launch their tour of schools in Somerset with their Greek myth, the Minotaur. As pupils entered, excitement began to mount at the prospect of an all-inclusive performance. After the performance, we spoke to the actors to hear firsthand what the intentions were behind putting together this production. Our director and writer came to uh, Bridgewater and went to some schools and chatted to people and they hit on they were they were they wanted to think about something that had an element of travel to it um, and about aspiration they hit on it as a, a good gory Greek myth that might apply to um, men and women equally so combination of the aims and objectives of the whole project and and the fact that it's a good story. Mm. And finally, what do you think will be the three best things about bringing theatre into schools? Thing number for, one. for me, the, one of the most exciting things about theatre, whether it's in a school or anywhere, but I suppose particularly it's a captive audience in a school, is um, bringing theatre to a new audience. I, lo I like it, um, somebody having never seen a play before, coming to see something, and the fact that mm. rather than anybody having to go anywhere, we've brought it in mm. is a great thing, because um, it, Art is something that this country is famous for, and particularly theatre, and it's, it's a great um, thing for the soul and for life to have theatre, so it's great to be able to bring it to new people. Altogether, it was an exciting experience for both staff and pupils at Haygrove School. Moving on to our local and national story of how the flooding affected our homes and businesses in recent weeks. We've all seen stunning images of how the floods came in in biblical proportions to wreak devastation and cause chaos. But what was it really like for those affected? We sent our reporters to investigate further on the reality of what it's like to lose your home due to flooding. And now, over to Haygrove School, to the head of drama, Mrs Guppy, who had to flee her home due to the rising waters. Our reporter, Jade, asked her how this had affected her and her family. The flooding has affected us in that we now have water in our house. It's up to my ankles. Uh, we've sort of been anticipating it for about the last week to ten days. And then finally the water came in um, this week, Tuesday. And last Friday we lost all our drainage, our septic tank. Everything. So although we were still camping in the house, all our belongings were up on the blocks and we had no drainage. Where are you living now? With friends uh, who live in Paulet, very kindly offered us a spare room, as have lots and lots of other people. So fortunately, just my husband and I, we don't have children as well, because that would have made it more difficult to house more of us. Our major problem is rehousing our animals, um, and that has been the focus of most of the week's activities to try and work out where all our animals are going. Um, so what are your future plans for you and your husband then? So it's rather a day-to-day -day existence at the moment. I'm hoping that there will be an end in sight. Thank you Jade. In response to staff and pupils alike suffering from the rising water, Hager have decided to run a non-school uniform day to raise money for the victims of the floods. Now over to Jade, who's interviewing our head teacher, Karen Cannon. How do you think the floods have affected our local community? Jade, I think the floods have had a devastating effect on the community. And uh, for several reasons. First of all, because we've never seen anything like this. And the second thing that I find really quite frightening is the fact that we don't know how long these conditions are actually going to exist. Um, there are measures being put in place now, but of course there is constantly that feeling that something should have been done before, something preventative should have been happening. And of course it feels to all our local people that you know, so much is now being done, but is it too late? And is it enough? I think that that's the problem. Um, I suppose in a way the nice thing is that people pull together. And Bridgewater is that sort of place, isn't it, where mm. it, it's a very sort of warm community, people help each other, and, and there is a certain sort of almost wartime spirit where people are actually getting on as, as far as they can with their everyday life. But personally, 
I uh, try to imagine how people are feeling. I mean, I, I can't imagine. I, I just think it's absolutely devastating. And it wasn't just staff affected, it was the pupils too. And now over to Ella, who is interviewing one of our students. Hello, I'm Ella from Haygrove School, and I've been joined here today by Becca, who's kindly agreed to talk to us about how the flood disaster has affected her home. Whereabouts do you live, and how has it been affected by the floods? I live in North Newton, in Chadmead, in the North Corner. Since before Christmas, the whole area's been underwater. Um, but it came up quickly and we had to move out for a good month um, before we could even access the property. Um, we had to move our animals um, in the small space of time that we had. Um, our pigs had to go to slaughter early. We've had to sell animals and the neighbouring farms have had to sell flocks. Thank you very much, Becca. Now over to Jade at the River Parrot. This is the scene at the River Parrot in Bridgewater today. As you can see, everything is calm and under control. But just two weeks ago, it was very different. The water was right up to the top of this arch. These businesses alongside the river have had sandbags piled up against their doorways and had to live with the constant threat of flooding. Where we are standing has been badly hit before. Just two years ago, the bank crashed into the River Parrot Wall. Today, just upriver from here, the water pumps were working to clear the water from the Somerset levels, and all of those billions of gallons will pass through the bridge during low tide. It is a daunting task indeed, but for now, at least it seems the danger has passed. Now over to Ella, who is in Blake Gardens. Thank you very much, Jade. Here at Blake Gardens, flooding struck twice, Fortunately, this is one of the few in Bridgewater Town Centre that was affected by the rising water. Here at the bandstand, the water reached the top level, so if you really wanted to, you could have swum to work. On the other hand, villages and towns surrounding Bridgewater were affected even worse. We were able to speak to the local council on how they helped when the floods hit Somerset. So I'll hand you over now to Daisy, who's outside the council buildings. Thank you, Ella. I'm here outside the council offices in King's Square where I'll be talking to Sarah Dowden, Public Health Manager of the local council, who has kindly agreed to talk to us about the recent floods and how it has affected the local area and the people of Somerset. It affected about 10-12% to 12 of our district council area. Um, that's two, two fairly large villages and it meant that um, access to them was only achieved by boat. What steps are being taken to help flood victims? We're helping them now to get back into their homes, so we're giving them support with how to contact their insurance company, how to access different loan schemes, and we're making sure that they've got some housing in the meantime before they can get back into their own home. Finally, what precautions should people take to protect their homes in the future? There's all sorts of things that uh, people can do to protect their homes, um, from having a good supply of sandbags in their own properties to putting in buns and all other kind of technical things around their home that, um, as a district council, we're giving that advice to, to homeowners in the future. On a beautiful day like today, it's hard to imagine the scenes of recent weeks. Let's hope the communities of Somerset and the local councils can work together to make sure such events never have the same human impact in the future. This is Jade for Haygrove School, BBC News Report. Thank you, Jade. That's all from us at the Haygrove BBC News Studios. Until next year, thank you for listening and goodbye. Goodbye.